we have a 20 week consultation period and we have it for a reason. There are a number of things that the Murray-Darling Basin Authority announced yesterday that are different to how things have been announced in the past. And I want to start working through the community reaction on that. At the moment, we have a draft which is prepared by an independent authority. Uh, but the reality is, uh, by the middle of next year, I need to have arrived at a document which I sign on to personally. What we, want, what we need in our communities is certainty. And what we haven't got with 971 gigalitres of shared uh, end of system flow water, what we don't get here is certainty. Now what we've been talking about is, when we talk of 971, and it, and it hasn't been split between the states, even if we went and split it between the states, what it means here is another 420,000 megalitres taken out of Northern Victoria. Is that sustainable? No. It's probably the equivalent of three or four milk factories and certainly the equivalent of a large tomato processing factory. Um, we're concerned um, about securing a long-term future of the rivers and their health. And um, one of the two specific things, um, climate change, doesn't seem to have been included in the modelling for the um, in environmental water needs. And also you talk about um, local involvement in environmental water management, and I'm just concerned that we don't see the skills and the support at this local level um, that we really need to make that an effective um, management. And I think it's very important for environmental waterings that we take the extra step while this money is available to make sure that the rivers are capable of delivering the water and, and the structures on the rivers obviously, delivering the water to those environmental sites that, in the most efficient way possible. But I think farmers in this region get a bit insulted when you start saying that um, perhaps other commodities aren't staples and that water's been so-called wasted or used on products like cotton or rice. But the farmers in this region have produced dairy products and horticulture that actually uh, plead not only this population but populations around the world take those kind of comments a bit, um, uh, almost as an insult. So I think we need to be better recognised for what we provide with the water um, rather than just being caught up in the political debate. My reasoning is this, the whole thousand gigalitres, gigalitres remaining can be saved through infrastructure spending. We don't need to take any more water off our land. There's 70 shops empty in Shepparton, 70. So that's a result of water being taken away from this area already. Look, just to reiterate, uh, you're right about the target, Tony. Um, irrigators want that target to be lower and the environment wants it to be higher. The environment movement is active here. Right? We have a view and this, this whole community is not all of one voice, I can assure you, on this issue. Thanks very much. And it seems that the authority is changing the language of the Water Act from ecological outcomes to a healthy working basin. That that's the language that they're talking about. And CSIRO on their report on the draft plan is suggesting that the figures in the plan will not meet its own ecological objectives, let alone those in the Water Act. So I'd just like your view on where we sit with respect to the Water Act at the moment. The question I wanted is fairly simple. We've talked about the amount of um, environmental water that the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder may, will eventually hold. I need to know as to whether that will ever be traded on a temporary basis. Because our development is, or our main maintenance as irrigation, irrigation farmers and the sustenance of the businesses will, will rely on that. Thank you. The other part about the infrastructure is that we've done it here. Uh, unless other large irrigation uh, people actually take it on and actually do it, you know, you're still going to have to go back to the market and get that water, and, uh, and that really worries me. Um, I made a, a recent visit to the authority in Canberra with a, with a, a group of a dairy delegation and uh, gave me no faith in uh, the socio-economic modelling that's been done that should be connected to, to the environmental um, elements of this whole plan. Uh, in fact, um, you know, the team there talked about how Essentially, our dairy industry could just switch over into dry land beef. And uh, there'll be plenty of people in the room that'll tell you that that is just not going to happen. On the socio-economic modelling, 
once again, can I say I have never seen a situation where socio-economic modelling provides information that can be precisely matched in a realistic way to individual communities. Can't be done, because it always involves presumptions. That's what modelling is by definition. Uh, so you will end up with some outcomes which make sense within a model, and then you try to match them up at the local level, and you say that's just not right. Uh, the modelling this time is better than it was last time, uh, but at the same time, it will only ever be modelling, and it will never match the quality of information at a local level, where you can balance off at a local level how many jobs in the short term are happening through, happening through the construction connected with the, irrigate, with the infrastructure projects, uh, what diversity there is within a local economy, which will differ from catchment to catchment, uh, obviously be different in Shepherd to what it would be in the Chuka. Uh, and then to have a look at for which crops uh, or produce that's currently been growing uh, in an area, which of them are also supporting downstream processing jobs, which are also located in the local community. And depending on the adjustments that happen there, you get a very different local outcome, depending on whether decisions are being made uh, by producers on growing something that feeds a downstream processing plant or one that doesn't. All of those little shifts will never be fully accounted for within a basin-wide model. Uh, you'll never get the presumptions that can take all of that into account. So this is why the modelling is probably as good as socio-economic modelling gets this time, but I'm not going to say that it provides anywhere near the sort of match that you would want. And that's why you would have heard Craig Knowles, you would have heard myself, you would have heard Simon Crean talk a lot about the need to have localism start to drive a lot of this in terms of how communities are helped through any adjustment that happens and localism in terms of how the environmental water is used. There, is some, there are some judgment calls and decisions that no matter how well you build in a computer model in the office of a public servant in Canberra, it will not match what you can work through at a local level.